Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part two in a short series of videos looking at the build of the flight seat. In this video we're going to take a close look at the design of that. Let's buckle up. As a brief reminder to the previous video, we took some time to outline the scope of this build and as can be seen on screen, at the centre of this picture you have the original temporary flight seat and to develop that to the final version we've got the scope outlined which is a better aesthetic, a seat that's more comfortable, it has dual tactile transducers, it's mounted onto an electronic base and it has extra controls. I mentioned that I'd researched online for some good plans for a flight seat and I got some from Flim at VR Pits. So in this video we'll take some time to look closely at the adjusted design. One of the first things that I did was to draw into Fusion 360 the electronic base in its various positions. So the first one that we can see on screen here, if we just come in close, is looking at the electronic base in its most rear position at its lowest height when it's untilted and we can see that there we can also see as well interestingly that the rails are off center it's obviously very important to have that in mind so i can see that it definitely will all fit and if we look at the side profile we can see the position of the base and where the seat would be relative to the rails we then have above that the the base when it's in its most forward position also at its lowest height and untilted and then the measurement between these two lets us see the extent of travel that there would be we then have a sketch of it in its most forward position untilted but at its mid height as we start to go through the travel on that axis and then we've got again in its most forward position at its greatest height untilted and then we move that down there we've got it, it at its most forward at its greatest height and tilted and when it tilts that increases the height further so this represents really the point at which the flight stick would be right up close against and I can be certain then that whatever then position I move the seat in it will not collide with that flight stick that it wouldn't hit it so of these the primary position it would tend to sit in would be at the mid height and that's what I'll incorporate into the de design as a drawing but I'll check that it fits with all of them the next thing is to take the original plans and although I have a render of them in FreeCAD the program I tend to use for everything is Fusion so I've took some time to redraw everything of the original plans into Fusion so let's just have a look at that there so these are the original plans for the flight seat we can get a good look here at How they're put together. In terms of these plans, both the originals and what I've developed them into, I spoke to Flim who did the initial design and confirmed he's happy with what I'm sharing in this video and in these series of videos. So I can share the full anatomy in quite some detail of these designs and the build up as it would be constructed. I can also touch on some of the types of wood I've used and the thickness of them. But beyond that, I won't share any key dimensions or scaling information. So the final CAD drawing and all of the vector line files aren't ones that I'll share. But that still leaves us a lot of detail we can look at. So by the side of the original plans, I now bring up my final adapted design and we'll have a close look at that. So the first thing we can see is there's a greater width to the seat 
and again that's so it can accommodate the size of the electronic base there's an extra cutout here as well because there will be the various buttons there to be able to control the movement of the seat also and um, this is something that i did see on the warthog project which does make a lot of sense is rather than having this hard wooden base that's fixed in place to actually sit on there will be a removable seat um, which will have some elasticated fabric for comfort whereas we can see the sort of headrests which I mean, they, they could be cut out of wood, but I've just left those here because I'll attach some other kind of fabric for comfort. We'll look more closely in a moment, but we can see that sort of internal to the design, there's just some extra supports I've put in place. And also looking underneath, there's quite a difference in in the base of them. And that's the thing that in looking at these, the similarities are, there's a lot of similarity in the upper part. They're almost identical effectively, but a lot of the differences are really here. And that's because the original plans, the seat would this would be the point at which it's it, it rests unless it's adapted to mount on something else and all of the weight would pass through to this lowest point whereas in in this version this uh, this plate here will sit onto the base which has its own adapter plate to fit the two together and all of these side bits here effectively then become a skirt that just floats around the edge so we'll take a closer look now at the upper part of the seat and let's just remove the skins as I've called them and have a look a little bit behind the scenes there. So obviously very, very, very similar. All I've really done here is just added some extra supports because if you imagine sitting back on the seat and the, all of the strength is in this structure here because what sits on top, if I put that back, is just a very thin piece of wood, perhaps just a 5 mil, 6 mil piece of plywood. So I decided as my, a lot of my weight will come into this area here to add some extra supports. And then some other small adjustments, just really for effective and assembly and ease of assembly, is if I look to remove a couple of these items here, and then we'll just do the same for the original. Let's just move through to that. One of the differences is I've added at all points that the items of wood connect to each other. Indentations, I've put grooves in place to be sure that they can be aligned perfectly. And then also there'll be pre-drilled holes and it's just to ensure that everything will go together well. Because with all of these bits of wood, which, I mean, if we look at the measurement there, that's 12 mil. If you're coming in from the other side without a guide hole, and you're doing this repeatedly over and over and over, there's going to be many times that you're not going to catch it exactly central, and you'll have screws popping up to the side and breaking the wood, which also could compromise the strength. So I've just taken the time to put all of those uh, pre-marked screw holes in and then all of the guides all of those grooves indentations we'll just put the put those back in place along with the skins and we'll take a moment now to look at the the base so if we remove the seat for the one and then the seat for the other and as we can see it's really made up of two parts you've got the fabric here and that stretchy fabric will be mounted over this wooden base this frame and then we'll just have a look side by side at the two
I've also at this point here obviously got a greater width of wood as it widens the overall seat to accommodate the base but to give this upper backrest a real strong connection and to be fitted to the actual base of the seat I've got these four coach bolts that are going to pass all the way through there into here and here so some of this was just taking the original and just adding what belts and braces really just making sure it's a really solid assembly What we'll look to do now is to build this up piece by piece in an order very similar to as the produced parts will be to just see how all of it will go together. Okay so the first thing is the upper side left. Again you can see these guides that I've put in. Then the lower side left and then a side brace left and the reason for this is because um, you would need a very large CNC machine to cut this as all as one piece and the one that I'll be using it's my father-in-law's CNC is one that's 600 roughly by about 365 so in this case we'll do it in two parts and then we'll have this brace here and then what we have is the same identical cutouts on the other side. We then have a top support, middle support and a lower support and it is where you'll see there's just a few extra supports added in on top of what was the original design. You've then got this upper left vertical support, upper right vertical support and then some additional ones are a lower left vertical support and a lower right vertical support. And this is the core structure now of the backrest. If we turn this round now, we've got an upper back and lower back along with back middle detail and back upper detail. So I refer to these as skins, this will be ply, this will be MDF here, and this will be plywood. Sorry, no, this will be a thicker plywood, this will be a thinner plywood, and there'll be just a few other items of MDF, which I'll mention a little bit later on into the design. You've then got the upper front cover, middle front cover, head front cover. And again, with this one here, this will be sort of one of the final things when it's all built that I'll have some kind of padding here and here just to, just for comfort as the head goes against that. In terms of the rocket tube, this is made up, this will be MDF, probably 6mm MDF, and that will just be glued together and then put in place. And again, spent the time just putting in all the guys just to make sure everything lines up nicely we look at that view there we can see some of the structure of that going together what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the the bottom of the flight seat which is really one of the key parts and that's where there's a great number of deviation from the original plans. So this represents the main base where it will, this will take all of the way to the seat. Because below this will be the electronic base which will have its own adapter plate that can connect to this. And then we've got the main seat left side, main seat right side. Then you've got, if I'm to the view here, and we'll come in a bit closer. The seat rim left inner, seat rim left inner again, number two. And that's mirrored over on the other side. And then we've got these extensions. And this is what really gives it this extra width that we needed.
and then the mid support that there was in the original plan has been pushed back here because what I want is I want the, the strength of a frame all around the edge but then an empty section below it where all of the tactile transducers and all the wiring can be housed. We then come on to the front and then inside of that we've got these couple of items of wood here so we can see it's created a lip sort of a frame that the the actual seat can can go on and then we've got some of these additions here more for the aesthetic so what we've now got then is the front seat side cover so these effectively I, I refer to them as skins again and they tend to be what give it the finish and the aesthetic we can see as well I've accounted for what will be the heads of the coach bolts so there's cutouts for those and then I'll just put the same on the other side And then we've got this item of wood here. Now this will be out of MDF. And we can self put a channel in here. So what we can have is a small tactile switch. And there'll be a bearing and a nut and bolt to hold that bearing in place that this then pivots on that bearing, this, this handle. And of course we can see it will engage with this switch and then the wiring will pass all the way down here and through that hole and that will come into this area here. And then that will be the same principle for the other side. We then have a couple of other handles that are part of the design. So we've got this middle left handle here. And there will be a kind of pull switch which I'll put in place below here and then probably hide it in a, an enclosure. And then on the other side, we've got the seat arm handle. And that's a similar thing again that it will be, it will have a bearing in here and then a nut and bolt to hold that in place. And of course for the aesthetic, there will then be covers so further skins that will go on top of these and then we've got again to give it a better finish we've got these covers detail covers left and right now with this space that we then have in the center the cavity this is where I can be thinking of putting the two tactile transducers and I'll work out, I'll do some tests at the time to see how the, to best have the vibra to where to position them for best effect of the vibration passing through to the seat. But it'll be something along these lines. And we now get to the flight seat frame, which we can see drops nicely onto this lip that we've created. And then there'll be this, it'll probably actually be a non-stretchable fabric because even that will give to some extent. I think if it's too um, stretchable, it'll actually be sinking right down into that cavity, which I don't want. And then we get to the point where underneath here, we've got a mounting plate, which is attached to the electronic base. So the, the in yellow here, this will be one unit that the, the seat will just drop onto. And then there'll be a few bolts just to um, hold the two together. In turn, this will be mounted onto a, a floor base. Now, it, it might be that I have this kind of cut out here so it can slide into place against a flight control stick. Or it might be that it will just be a straight cut. And that might actually make it easier to move around. But what will be needed will be... A couple of wire spacers so I'm thinking some further MDF that will just lift this up and give a small cavity underneath so wiring can pass through the seat and through into here and some of the wiring will pass out the back 
and some will pass out the front. And that is effectively the completed adapted design. There will be, when I get to the stage of this being constructed, all of the decorative aspects of various um, pipeware that will come round. Um, there'll be a decal set of some kind I will use. I probably will try and print something myself if I can. So I'd like to give a shout out to my father-in-law Phil, who's done quite a bit with woodworking previously. And in putting together the design of this flight seat, I've gone around on a number of occasions to share with him uh, the development of the adapted design and take on board any thoughts in terms of the, the physical construction that will follow. So the task before me now is to source all of the wood needed for this and put together all of the vector files for machining. In the next video, we'll take a close look at this and the assembly and construction of the flight seat. Thanks for watching.